When a 96-year-old woman decided to sell her house, she warned her family about the basement and forbade them from ever entering it. Still, the new owners decided to open it out of curiosity. What they found inside is shocking. Joyce Gladwell sat in her living room with a daughter beside her. The 96-year-old woman's hands shook slightly as she reached for her cup of tea. Dear, she began, her voice trembling. I've decided to sell the house. Her daughter looked surprised. But you've lived here for so long. Are you sure? Joyce nodded firmly. Yes, it's time, but there's something very important you need to know. She leaned in close and whispered, No matter what, you must never, ever open the basement door. Promise me. The daughter frowned, confused. I promise. But why? What's down there? Joyce's eyes clouded over, and she became silent. She stared out the window, lost in memories she couldn't or wouldn't share. Her daughter waited, but Joyce didn't explain, leaving the basement mystery unspoken between them. The next day, Joyce called Vaziri Real Estate. The phone rang loudly, breaking the quiet afternoon at the agency. Gladys, the elder of the two sisters who ran the successful Toronto agency, reached for the receiver. Vaziri Real Estate, Gladys speaking. How can I help you today? A shaky voice responded, Hello, this is Joyce Gladwell. I need to sell my home. Gladys sensed something unusual in the caller's voice and gestured for her sister, Carla, to join the call. Of course, Mrs. Joyce. We'd be happy to help. Can you tell me a bit about your property? What followed was one of the strangest conversations the Vaziri sisters had ever experienced. Joyce avoided direct questions, spoke in riddles, and seemed hesitant to sell her home, yet insisted it had to be done. I've lived here for 72 years, Joyce finally admitted, but it's time. It's finally time. Intrigued and slightly uneasy, Gladys and Carla agreed to meet Joyce at her home the next day. As they hung up, they exchanged worried glances. What do you think? Carla asked, frowning. Gladys shook her head. I don't know, but I have a feeling this isn't going to be a typical sale. The next day, as Gladys and Carla arrived at Joyce's house, they were surprised by how ordinary it looked. A quaint 1940s home, it blended in with the other houses on the street. Nothing about the exterior hinted at the extraordinary secrets inside. Joyce answered the door after the third knock. Despite her age, she stood tall with her silver hair neatly pinned back. Her blue eyes seemed to hold decades of untold stories. Come in, she said, her voice stronger than it had been on the phone. You will be taking a tour around the house, but the basement is off limits. Gladys and Carla exchanged a quick glance before stepping inside. What they saw was astonishing. The inside of Joyce's home was like a vibrant time capsule from the mid 20th century. Each room was painted a different bright color, emerald green in the living room, sunny yellow in the kitchen, and bold coral in the dining area. Pristine vintage furniture filled every space. Oh my, Carla whispered wide-eyed. Mrs. Gladwell, your home is incredible. Joyce smiled slightly. Thank you, dear. I've always had a flair for design, but come, let me show you around. As they toured the house with Joyce and her daughter, the sisters' amazement grew. The house was clean, like new. The living room featured a vintage TV with rabbit ear antennas. Mrs. Joyce? Gladys asked, awestruck. How have you kept everything so perfect? Joyce's eyes sparkled mysteriously. Oh, a little care goes a long way, and maybe a touch of magic. They continued the tour, each room more spectacular than the last. The main bedroom was a vision of purple, and the guest room was entirely pink. But the basement door caught the sisters' attention. Unlike the rest of the house, it was plain and unadorned, with a simple padlock on the latch. Remember, Joyce said sternly, the basement is not part of the tour. It's not to be opened or included in the sale. Joyce's daughter looked worried when the basement was mentioned. 
Gladys and Carla nodded, though their curiosity was piqued. What could be so secretive about the basement? As they finished the tour, the sisters knew they had found something extraordinary. Despite the mysterious basement, they were confident they could sell this unique property for a high price. Mrs. Joyce, Gladys said, we'd be honored to list your home. It's truly one of a kind. Joyce nodded, a mix of relief and sadness on her face. Thank you. I knew you were the right people for the job, but please promise me one thing. Of course, Carla replied. When you find a buyer, make sure they understand. The basement must remain closed, always. The sisters agreed, though they couldn't help but wonder about the warning. As they left, Gladys and Carla felt a shiver run down their spines. There was more to this house than met the eye, and they were determined to uncover its secrets. Over the next few weeks, Joyce's home became the talk of the Toronto real estate world. Potential buyers flocked to open houses, drawn by the property's unique charm and impeccable preservation. But with each showing, the mystery of the basement grew. Joyce's family helped her pack up her belongings. As they filled each box, the mystery of the basement grew more tense. Mom, Joyce's daughter said one day, don't you think it's time to tell us what's really down there? Joyce shook her head firmly. It's better if you don't know. Promise me you'll never try to find out. The family reluctantly agreed, but their curiosity was clear. Rumors began to circulate. Some speculated that Joyce had been a spy during the Cold War, and the basement held classified documents. Others whispered about hidden treasures or priceless artifacts. A few even suggested something more sinister, that the basement concealed evidence of a long-forgotten crime. Through it all, Joyce remained tight-lipped, refusing to satisfy anyone's curiosity about what lay behind that locked door. As the bidding war for the house intensified, so did the speculation. The Vaziri sisters found themselves fielding increasingly bizarre questions from potential buyers. Finally, after a few months, a buyer was found. The Warren family, John, Sarah, and their two children, fell in love with the home's retro charm and didn't seem bothered by the basement stipulation. When the house finally sold, Joyce gathered everyone in the living room for one last warning. I know you're all curious about the basement, she began, her voice trembling, but I need you all to promise me that you'll never, ever try to come around and open that door. Not even after I'm gone. Her children nodded seriously, though the mystery weighed heavily on their minds. As they locked up the house for the last time, Joyce's family couldn't shake the feeling that they were leaving behind more than just a building. They were leaving behind a secret that had shaped their lives in ways they couldn't understand. On the day of the closing, Joyce insisted on being present. She pulled Sarah Warren aside as the papers were signed and keys exchanged. Remember, Joyce said, her voice low and urgent, no matter what you hear, no matter how curious you become, do not open that basement door, promise me. Sarah, surprised by the old woman's intensity, nodded. I promise, Mrs. Gladwell, we'll respect your wishes. With that, Joyce left her home of 72 years for the last time, leaving behind a legacy of beauty, mystery, and unanswered questions. The Warrens moved in the following week, excited to start their new life in the charming vintage home. At first, everything was perfect. They loved how well-kept the house was, feeling like they were stepping back in time each time they walked through the front door. But soon, they noticed some odd things about the house. There was a persistent, musty smell coming from the direction of the basement. They also heard occasional creaking and settling noises, which they initially thought were just because the house was old. As months passed, Sarah noticed water stains forming on the living room floor near the basement door. Worried about potential damage, John decided it was time to investigate, despite Joyce's warning. After all, the old woman had passed away a few weeks earlier, 
and he felt less guilty about breaking their promise now that she wasn't alive anymore. With some hesitation, he and Sarah unlocked the basement door and went downstairs. What they found was surprising, but way less than they'd expected. The basement was filled with decades worth of belongings, old furniture, boxes of papers, and various antiques. More concerning was the visible water damage on one wall, with mold starting to form. It was clear there was a serious foundation issue that needed to be fixed. But as they carefully moved through the cluttered space, John discovered something unexpected, a hidden door behind an old bookshelf. Curious, they opened it and found a small, concealed room. Inside, they found stacks of old newspapers and magazines dating back to the 1930s, carefully preserved. Boxes were also filled with wartime ration books, victory bonds, and other World War II era memorabilia. It seemed Joyce had been a collector and archivist of local history. But the most intriguing discovery was a collection of journals. As Sarah flipped through them, she realized they contained Joyce's personal accounts of life during the Great Depression and World War II, offering a vivid glimpse into those turbulent times from a local perspective. The Warrens now understood why Joyce had been so protective of the basement. It wasn't just a storage space, but a carefully curated time capsule of her life and the history she had lived through. The Warrens were deeply moved by the historical significance of their discovery. They quickly contacted Joyce's family, who were astonished to learn about the hidden collection. Joyce's daughter explained that her mother had always been very private about her past, and this discovery shed light on why. Together, the Warrens and Joyce's family carefully catalogued each item. They found World War II ration books, victory bonds, and rare newspapers announcing major historical events. Joyce's journals were a treasure trove of personal observations about life during the Depression and wartime Toronto. After much discussion, they decided to donate most of the items to the local historical society. The curator was ecstatic, calling it one of the most comprehensive personal collections from that era they had ever received. This ensured that Joyce's carefully preserved slice of history would be shared with the community, educating future generations about life in mid-20th century Canada. The basement itself required significant work. John and Sarah hired contractors to address the water damage and mold issues, installing proper waterproofing to prevent future problems. Once the space was renovated, they turned it into a cozy family room, incorporating some of Joyce's vintage furniture to maintain the home's character. They kept a few select items from the hidden room, creating a small display case in the corner of the basement. It served as a conversation piece and a reminder of the home's rich history. The Warrens often found themselves sharing Joyce's story with friends and family who visited, marveling at their unexpected connection with the previous owner. In the end, what seemed like a mysterious secret became a beautiful legacy of one woman's life and the times she lived through. The Warrens felt privileged to be the caretakers of this history, and their home took on a deeper meaning for them. As for Joyce's warning about the basement, the family speculated that she might have been concerned about the water damage or wanted to protect her private collection. Whatever the reason, they were glad they had investigated, as it allowed them to preserve the house and its hidden treasures. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Have you ever discovered something unexpected in an old house? Or do you have family heirlooms that tell a story of times past? Share your experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing stories.